Okay, what we're going to do now is show you uh, show you how to put the jib on the boat. Um, again, there's different techniques of doing this, uh, but one of the most important things is if you shackle your jib at the bottom, which you really have to do, is when you put the shackle on, put it through the D-ring and then through the jib, but you really you don't ever want the pin to be that way around in your shackle, because that will just go straight through the spinnaker, cause you a fairly expensive repair. So what we we'll do is just turn it round, so it's the other way round, and then the pin will go in from the other side. Okay, tighten it off. If you've still got a little bit of sharp, little sharp bits, then put a bit of tape on it. You see I put a bit of tape on there, stop the spinnaker getting caught, and then you've got a nice flush edge so that you don't catch the spinnaker on it. And then follow up along the front edge of the jib, okay, until you get to the top so that you know you haven't got any twists in it, and then attach your halyard to the top of the jib. Okay, now when you attach the jib um, to the halyard, you can see here I've actually got a chain plate which has come off the bottom of one of the shrouds, a spare one that I had. Other people use shackles that go in here. The reason for using this is um, a number of reasons. If you're going to vary the angle of your mast, which we'll come into in the tuning section later, then obviously the length of the forestay is going to vary depending if the mast tip right back, the forestay is going to have to be longer. And I can therefore put it in different holes depending on the length of my forestay. That's not the most useful reason. The other reason is that when you buy a jib, often the, uh, the, the, the wire down the front is quite tight and it stretches over time. So having shackles in means you can take them out um, as you wish, depending on the, the variance in length of the halyard system. So just put, like, put this in here. Always put it in the same hole. I always know which hole it goes in, uh, depending on my mast setup. And then once I've got it in, I put the, uh, put the loop on the other end of the pin. In. and then tape it up so that uh, none of this is this is quite the area is quite vulnerable to the spinnaker this is where the head of the spinnaker sits so it's important to tape that up and then hoist it to the top of the mast. Okay, when you're uh, rigging up the boat it's really important to get a lot of tension in the jib uh, it's really not a good idea I really wouldn't recommend you sailing the, uh, the laser 2 without suitable rig tension the whole rig is designed to be rigid um, so that it won't collapse on you when you're sailing. And you really need two people for this point here. What I've got in order to help you uh, rig the, uh, put the rig tension is a piece of hose which I've cut all the way down the length here. And that hose will go on the forestay and I'll show you now how I'm going to use it to put the tension on. What I'll do is put the hose on here and just basically lean back really hard while the crew puts the uh, halyard on the right setting. Put your foot in the uh, spinnaker chute. So you hook it on, and there uh, you can see now this is nice and loose. But our bungee rope here that we put on at the beginning stops it getting interfering with our telltales when we're sailing. And there we have a nice load of rig tension. Once you've got your jib up. Uh, while you're uh, swinging on the forestay, you want to the crew wants to try and make sure they don't get the rope bit of the halyard stuck in between the metal bit of the halyard and the hook, because that will wear through really quickly, and it's a real pain having to whip this back together to uh, to try and uh, remove the frayed bit, and your halyard gets shorter and shorter. So while you're swinging, just make sure you pull this rope bit out from underneath, and then it's freely uh, free on there and not chafing away.